بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما brothers and sisters الحمد لله we are looking at the issue of the criteria the criterion of winners and losers what makes a person a winner and what makes a person a loser and what determines that what is the criteria that we must use and that criteria is the criteria that is set by the judge because winners and losers in anything whether it's a race whether it's a business or whether it is life itself whether it's careers uh, we don't decide the world decides in the in a business it is your customers who decide you may, you may have a and you may have what you consider to be the absolutely best product or service that the world needs absolutely 100% the best and you are giving it at a very reasonable price but except that your customers your potential customers don't seem to see, don't seem to think that and so your business will fail even though it's a it's a good product it's a good uh, concept it's uh, you know well made uh, high quality everything but who determines whether your business is successful or not yourself or your customers it is the customers because a successful business is one which makes money and why is it therefore today for example if you look at it why is it therefore that businesses which are clearly toxic products which are clearly toxic to the point of being poisonous are huge successes because we are faced with a society which is insane people do not seem to be able to determine what is good and what is bad and as a result they are they are promoting and they are selling things which are hugely toxic which are extremely harmful but customers don't seem to see that so they buy it and therefore the business is successful now the point i am making here is that this is true of life what is a successful marriage not where one spouse thinks that he or she is the best it is when the other spouse thinks that this one is the best that's a successful marriage it's always somebody outside you who determines whether you are a winner or not and therefore i'm saying here that it's the judge who will judge our lives at the end of our life who will determine whether we are winners or we are not winners i'm saying that for this for another for another very good reason which is that for example you might be doing something which is very good and you have no supporters you have no customers not only that you might actually be getting flack for it you might be getting opposed for it you might be getting may allah protect you you might be getting beaten up for it in one way or the other physically psychologically what not but are you a winner or loser you are a winner because those customers are not the judge the judge is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is where we are taking this out of the original framework which i gave you which is a purely business commercial framework a successful business is one that makes money so even a business which is toxic even a business which is uh, completely you know miserable and horrible a business which has no right uh, because it's it's uh, take for example somebody who is uh, selling drugs right today we don't have to go very far for that Uh, today we have uh, governments which are selling drugs but the point here is that if somebody is uh, uh, selling drugs and you go uh, to that person uh, and and you say well we you know what's your turnover the turnover will be phenomenal right it is the most successful business business in the world but is that successful no it is not successful it, is that person a winner no they are not winner they are they are they are, they are abject horrible miserable losers uh, losers because the real judge is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So as I said, standard commercial definition of a business is whether uh, is the customer meaning do you have customers? But the real judge, the real differentiator, the real decider of life itself is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now take for example one of the uh, one of the famous uh, quotes uh, of. Uh, uh, of of uh, i think it was also imam malik who said this but also this is attributed to bakar bin abdullah al muzaini 
رحمه الله تعالى. He said Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه was not poor like Abu Dar Ghifari or Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنهما, but he was better than them. He wasn't perpetually tortured like Khabbab and Bilal or Sumayya or Yasir رضي الله عنهم أجمعين, but he was better than them. He wasn't severely injured in battle like Talha or Abu Ubaida or Khalid bin Walid رضي الله عنهم, but he was better than them. He wasn't martyred, he did not die shaheed like Hamza or Umar or Uthman or Ali رضي الله عنهم أجمعين, but he was better than them. So what was the secret that made Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه better than everyone? Now, as I said, Bakr bin Abdullah Al-Muzani uh, and as, as far as I can recall also Imam Malik Rahmatullahi they said that Abu Bakr did not precede them due to offering a lot of salah and fasting and so on but because of something that settled in his heart because of something that settled in his heart and that was the act the, the uh, that was the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which settled in his heart and this is what made him and gave him uh, a position that is uh, superior to everyone except the Anbiya alayhi wasallam. It's the, I continue from the same uh, quote, uh, it is the actions of the heart you see. That's what made his faith outweigh the faith of the entire ummah. We learn that faith or iman is actions of the heart combined with statement of the tongue and actions of the limbs but we ignore the actions of the heart even though that is its essence and core like when you enter islam it is tasdeeq bil qalb iqrar bil lisan wa amal bil arkan it is the heart confirming tasdeeq the belief the confirming the belief of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and then the tongue articulates this belief when a person states the shahadatain and then the person lives or should live their life according to that kalima which is there is no one worthy of worship except Allah so they must worship Allah and they must not join in worship with Allah that no one can harm or help other than Allah and therefore they should not seek help from anyone other than Allah and they should not ascribe the ability to harm to anyone other than Allah. And we say we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after whom there is none other. And therefore we must be, make our lives on the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? This is the core. And the core, it begins with the heart. Now I continue with the quote. He said, every act of worship has an essence and a physical manifestation. The manifestation of Salah is the standing and the Ruku and the Sujood but its essence is Khushu which is humility, awe and reverence and concentration Khushu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The manifestation of fasting is to withhold from everything that breaks the fast from sunrise to sunset but its essence is Taqwa, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The manifestation of Hajj is the tawaf and the sa'i and the standing in arafah and so on but its essence is honoring the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The manifestation of dua is the raising of the hands and the praise and request but its essence is the brokenness and the need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. The manifestation of dhikr is, la, is saying Allahu Akbar, uh, la ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah, Subhanallah and so on, but its essence is the remembrance, the reverence, and the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on the day of the, uh, uh, in our hearts. Because for on the day of judgment, it is the hearts that will be exposed, and only those who come with a serene heart, with a qalbun salim, that that is repentant, a heart that has turned to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and remained there, only those people will be. Saved on that day. Woman at Allah be Kalbin Salim. Let us then remember to monitor our hearts as severely as we monitor our actions and remember that in this world we traverse distances with our feet, but in the hereafter, distances are only traversed by our hearts.
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to understand this. My brothers and sisters, I want to remind you, myself and you, that the Nusrat of Allah, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes only to those who choose to be obedient to Him, Jalla Jalalu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them from sources that they could not imagine. But all that is only for the Muttaqoon, the obedient, not for the Fasikhoon, the rebellious. Selective obedience is disobedience. When you pick and choose what you will obey, you are not obeying at all. Because that picking itself is a sign of gross arrogance. So stop fooling yourself. You are consciously choosing to disobey. Then where is the obedience? You are playing with fire. Choose your actions consciously for you will pay for them dearly. As Allah said, Conditional. The one who has taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will extract him from his difficulties. Allah did not say will extract everybody. No. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for the one who has taqwa, Allah grants him a way out of problems and provides for him in a manner beyond all expectation from sources that he cannot imagine. And for the one who places his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become sufficient for that person. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used deeds as the measure of his mercy on the believer as when Rasulullah said, Anas bin Malik narrated that Rasulullah said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills good for his slave, he uses him. They asked him, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use him? Rasulullah said, he guides him to do good before he dies. He guides him to do good deeds before he dies. Yeah. May Allah bless the Sahaba. They used to ask these beautiful questions, thanks to which we have our deen. So they said, when Nabi Sallallahu said that when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wishes good for his slave, he guides him to do, uh, he, he uses him. And they asked him, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala use him? He said he guides him to do good deeds before he dies. And this is in uh, Musnad Ahmad and in Tirmidhi. Then uh, Rasulullah uh, uh, said in another place uh, in a hadith which is also in uh, uh, Musnad Ahmad, he said, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills good for his slave, he sweetens him. Uh, when, he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills good for his slave, he sweetens him. So they asked him, what is this sweetening, Ya Rasulullah? Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to do righteous deeds before he dies and then he takes his soul while he is in that state. He takes his soul while he is doing something which is righteous and which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to grant that to us inshallah, to make us among those who are his righteous slaves and who he uses in his path and who he sweetens by guiding them to do right, righteous things and then he takes their soul in a state when they are doing something which is righteous and which he likes. My brothers and sisters, there are um, again, as I said, Allah mentioned the importance of good deeds in gaining His pleasure and reward. There are many ayat in the Quran which speak about the importance of conduct and show the link between our actions and our lives. I will quote just two. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Zahr al fasadu fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydi nasi li yuziqahum baad al ladhi amilu la allahum yarjoon." قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْزُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِ كَانَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ مُشْرِكِينَ Allah Ta'ala said which means evil, uh, fasad, evil and disobedience and sins has appeared on the land and the sea because of what the hands of men have earned by their oppression and by their evil deeds. 
so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may make them taste a part of that which they have done in order that they may return by, by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging his pardon. And then Allah say, and then Allah continued and, say, and said, Say, Qul, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, see fil ard, travel in the land and see what the end of those before you was. Most of them were mushrikeen. Most of, the, most of them were idolaters. So this is a, uh, this is a very big, uh, you know, uh, for us, very big uh, thing to, to understand and very big uh, lesson of what happens. Allah says, go and see, see what there is. Now Allah SWT is saying here in this ayat that there is a direct link between our actions and conditions that we find ourselves in and our actions are the cause of those conditions. Just think about this today, I mean, the famous uh, you know, uh, conversation uh, between Elon Musk and the World Food uh, Organization. Uh, where uh, he uh, he said that you know he told them that I uh, with two percent of my wealth I can feed every hungry every hungry person on the face of the earth two percent of the wealth of one man can feed every hungry person on the face of the earth you know what is the what is the fundamental question that comes into me into my mind. And people ask all kinds of questions. My, my, I have only one question. And my question is, if that is so, then why is anybody hungry? If just 2% of the wealth of one man is enough to feed every hungry person to ensure that nobody goes to bed hungry, then why, is, why are people hungry? Imagine that same 2%, that, that amount, if it is shared among the billionaires of the world, then for each billionaire, what will it amount to? For one person it is 2% of his wealth. For when that is shared between, you know, the billionaires of the world, it won't even show a blip on their, uh, on their balance sheets. But every person will go to bed with a meal. The problem of our world is not a deficit is not a material deficit, not a deficit, deficit of cash. It's a deficit of compassion. It's a deficit of mercy. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Many times people ask this very dumb and stupid question when they see suffering, when they see wars, you know, take, the, take, take Yemen for example, nobody gives a damn. Right? There is war happening in Ukraine and of course it's a horrible thing, it should not happen. We're very sorry for that. But you find there's a huge amount of attention being given to Ukraine. And there has been a war going on in Yemen for now, you know, years. And if you take the casualties, in Yemen multiples of the casualties of Ukraine have already happened. Nobody gives a damn. It doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist to figure out the reason why. Right? Think about that. So if there is suffering, and people say, or they see suffering, oh, if there is God, why is there suffering? Huh? I want to say to them, if you have a brain, why do you talk like this? If there is God, what's God do? What has God do, got to do with that? Why doesn't God do something? He did something. He created you. He created you. Gave you a brain which you see, which you refuse to use. He gave you resources which are really meant for the people. Rasulullah said, don't withhold resources because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you those resources for the people. Keep giving it to the people and Allah will keep giving you. But if you withhold it, then Allah will withhold from you. So Allah is saying that the problems that you are seeing in the world are created by you. And subhanAllah, this is so true. This is so completely true. So we're looking at the criterion of winners and losers. Ask ourselves this question. Let us ask ourselves this question. Who is a winner? Who is a loser? And then the second ayat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً 
مُبْلِسُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so when they forgot the warning with which they had been reminded, Allah did not catch them. Allah said, we open to them the gates of every pleasant thing until in the midst of their pleasure, in the midst of their enjoyment, in what they had been given, all of a sudden, we took them to punishment and lo, they were plunged into destruction with deep regret and sorrows. And that's what we are seeing happening today. This is what we are seeing happening today. Why else do you think there is example after example after example in the world of people, of individuals, sometimes of nations, sometimes of groups who do wrong upon wrong upon wrong, who oppress and more oppress and more oppress people, who steal people's resources, who play with people's lives and their dignity. Yet you see that they are getting more wealth and more power and more ability to do this. Why is that happening? The Quran is answering that for us. They asked Imam Shafi, they said, they asked him, they said, uh, we find, he said, they said, you, you say that good results in good and evil results in the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we find that this is not so. We find that it's the opposite. He said, what is the opposite? He said, the opposite is that people do all kinds of evil and they seem to get more and more and more money and more power and more, uh, you know, authority and so on and so forth. So where is the punishment? Now, Shafi Rahmatullah recited this ayat of Surah Tulana. And he said, this is evidence that for such people, the azab, the punishment has already begun. The doors of Hidayah have been shut. The doors of all material good things have been opened so that they can engross themselves and they can immerse themselves even more in all that and completely forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and completely forget about the Akhirah until they are taken in the midst of their enjoyment and not even given the ability, the chance to make tawbah and it's the part. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. So if somebody is getting a chance to make istighfar, then inshallah, we, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, you know, have uh, faith that Allah will forgive. When the Firaun was drowning, Rasulullah s.a.w. said, when the Firaun was drowning, Jibreel salam said that he took mud and put it in his mouth so that he would not be able to seek forgiveness. Even Firaun would have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he had asked to be forgiven. But his actions were so evil that this was denied to him. My brothers and sisters, we have to understand this, this is not fun and games. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore uh, showed us also how if we uh, change our way of life and repent from our evil deeds. This produces results. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this produces results. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, he should, Allah mentioned the story of Nuh alayhi salam. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh alayhi salam said, I said to them, ask forgiveness from your Rabb. He is off forgiving. He will send rain to you in abundance and he will give you an increase in wealth and children and bestow on you gardens and bestow on you rivers. And what? how will all this happen? If they repent, if they change their ways. So what is it telling us? It is telling us that it is our evil deeds, it is our wrong decisions, it is our insistence on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is bringing the evil. Today we are living in a world where every day or every two weeks there is a new virus. Right? Every two weeks there is a new virus. You've never seen a situation like this where you have COVID, uh, COVID is there in the air, and you take vaccines, and you take boosters, and you take more boosters, and still you can get COVID. 
right? Doesn't it seem like it's insane? And that's why people refuse to believe that there is COVID. Now that's, a, that's another insanity. And then apart from COVID, so many other things. Right now, as I speak to you, I have close relatives. One of whom is in hospital with oxygen. The others are at home. They are being tested for COVID every day. They are COVID free. There's no COVID. They test negative every day. What do they have? They have some other new kind of strain of influenza, some new kind of flu. Why is all this happening? Yet, we want to insist and we want to insist on disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we don't only want to disobey Allah, we want to do that as our right. We want to push this down other people's throats and say, you also must disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see the language that is used, it is the language of faith. People do not really believe they are hypocritical in their belief. This is the language of faith. What are they talking about here? They're talking about gross disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely, shamelessly, in the open and done as a right. There's no, there's no shame to that. Right? You're not hiding behind a wall and, and smoking a cigarette or something. You're not sitting quietly somewhere in a, in a, in a hovel smoking some joint. No. Open. Really, I mean, we, these are things that we have to uh, we have to think about and say that how is it that we call ourselves intelligent and we still believe that these things will not have results? These things have no consequences? Believe me, there, there are consequences. Those consequences are happening to us as we speak and just because we want to be so stupid as not to recognize the consequences, it does not mean that there are no consequences. Our recognizing the consequence or not recognizing the consequence will not change the reality. And the reality is that there are consequences and that we will pay and that the price we pay will be very, very severe. Very severe. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from this and to give us some good sense. Otherwise, where does it take us? Tell me. My brothers and sisters, let us not play games. Let us not play games and to play games with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even worse. Right? The laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to remind myself in you, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not change. What worked for the people of Nuh alayhi salam in the ayat which I recited for you will work for us. So let us repent. Let us make istighfar and let us return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, re to accept our repentance and dua and to fill our lives with his baraka, inshallah. But we have to make the effort. Right? We have to make the effort. Because Islam, my brothers and sisters, is about action. It's not about sterile belief. Islam is, as I keep saying again and again, Islam is not merely a theology or a philosophy or a theory. But it's a practice which gives results as soon as it is brought into action. As I say, I give, the, I give this example again and again. And that example is of martial arts. Knowing about judo will not save you in a street fight. Knowing judo will save you in a street fight. And what is the difference between knowing about and knowing? Knowing about is you just have the you just have the knowledge. I mean, you, may, you you would have got it out of a book. You could have you could have memorized the book. But knowing requires effort. It requires going to the dojo. It requires learning how to fall fall 10,000 times when you survive 10,000 throws, then you learn how to fall without injuring yourself, Le learn the moves, learn the throws, learn the, learn the uh, actions. It is the practice which helps. Going to the gym will not build your body. Working out in the gym will build your body. 
the reception uh, the receptionist of the gym who looks like a dried shrimp also goes to the gym he or she goes and sits there on the reception desk for 8 hours whereas somebody who is working out goes and works for 1 hour a day this person time duration spent in the gym is how much for this person is 8 hours for, the, for this other person it is 1 hour but if you look at the two if you look at their muscles who has who has better muscles who has more muscles this is islam this is the criterion of success and failure is our actions i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to do uh, that which is pleasing to him and to save us from that which does not please him wa sallallahu ala nabiyil karim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika arhamar rahimin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin